you join us for part four of how to make a longbow. It's time to fit an arrow plate. This prevents arrows wearing a groove in the wood. We're using mother of pearl, mainly composed of calcium carbonate and produced by mollusks to protect its interior tissue. We cut a piece just over one centimetre wide and around two and a half centimetres long. Obviously any shape can be fitted to suit your taste or skill level. You can shape the piece by hand or if you want to speed up the process you can use a grinder as shown here. Please watch your fingers and definitely wear a mask. Now that we have our finished shape, it's time to find where it's going to sit in the bow. Place an arrow in the bow whilst it's braced, roughly opposite the top of the handle. This will allow us to see where an arrow would actually touch the side of the bow. Mark the bow at the point of contact. This will give us the centre for our plate. Then we can mark the top of the handle with a horizontal line for the bottom of the arrow plate to sit on. Offer up the mother of pearl, placing the bottom on that horizontal line. Continue to draw around the shape of the arrow plate, doing your best to keep it in place as you do so. It's time to remove the wood from within the pencil line we just made. I start with a sharp craft knife. You could also use a Stanley blade or similar. As I have a macro lens fitted to my camera, it makes all this work look a lot larger than it does in person. So it's very important to go slowly and have a steady hand whilst doing this process. For those of you who've never done any carving or similar relief work, you may want to practice on a spare piece of wood before risking the bow that you've spent so much time on. Once I've established a deep enough boundary cut, I can start using a small half round chisel to get out a majority of the wood from the centre. Again, I have to be very careful not to slip. I try to work in the direction of the handle, so if I do slip, the mistake is covered by the handle. Slow and steady wins the race.
as long as you've done a deep enough boundary cut, you should find the work that we're doing with the chisels goes without an issue. Once the majority of the wood is out, it's time to move over to a smaller chisel for the finer work as we approach the sides of our hole and the awkward pointed section. If you feel you've taken out quite a substantial amount of wood, it's good to check how far you've gone by placing the plate in position to check your progress. The overall fit of the shape is fine, but the plate is still sitting proud, so I need to take out a little bit more depth. People have often shown concern over the years that putting in an arrow plate would somehow weaken the bow and cause a breakage. Trust me, after 40 years of experience, I've never actually seen a bow break at that point. The plate is only about 2mm thick and it's so near the handle that very little limb movement actually happens at that point. Our fit and depth is now good. Let's get it glued in with some two-part epoxy. After leaving it to set well for 24 hours, we can now get rid of any excess glue and round off the flat edges to match in with the curved shape of the bow.
Once finished with the rasp and file, I can move on to using the scraper to get rid of any large tool marks. I won't bother with the sandpaper yet, as the next stage is to sand and finish the bow. If you've been enjoying this series and found it useful, please give us a like. If you'd like to support the work that we're doing, feel free to donate using the thanks button which is just below the video, or our PayPal donate which you'll find in the comments and description box. See you for part 5 of How to Make a Longbow.